I'm on my way to camp with some friends tonight, but I've got all day and not a huge distance to cover. I'm following a highway I've driven many times before, but always on my way to more distant destinations or just trying to get back home. Today, I'm going to try to check out a few spots along the way that I normally just have to hurry on past. Well, this was going to be my route to my first point of interest. Fortunately, the central Oregon forests are often crisscrossed with an intricate web of dirt roads, so with a quick glance at the map, I found another way around. Unfortunately, this is the one and only path up the butte I was hoping to ascend, which is just something I spotted in satellite imagery where it looked like I might find some intriguing rock formations. I guess I'll have to check it out from afar. I've got a few other points of interest I want to hit today, all requiring some highway miles in between if I'm going to make it to camp by this evening. Soon, I'm back off the highway. When I mapped today's excursion, this power line road made the most sense for getting to my next destination. I'm pleasantly surprised to find it so freshly graveled that it hasn't yet developed the slightest washboarding. This massive crater is called Hole in the Ground. I've been here before, but it's been about five years and it's really a cool sight to see. Although it kind of looks like an impact crater, this is actually a type of volcano called a mar. My friend, Oregon filmmaker Matt Cook, has an excellent short documentary about Hole in the Ground that is totally worth a watch. I'll put a link in the description below.
left hole in the ground behind and I'm working my way back towards the highway. In the distance, I spot another feature I've driven past many times, a flat-topped butte that towers above the surrounding desert. Researching this excursion, I notice there is a road that winds around it to the top, and it is public land, so I want to see if I can actually get up there. The rather circuitous route spirals up the flanks of the butte through a charming low forest of juniper. The uphill progress is taking longer than I expected, but the increasingly expansive vista of the valley floor below reflects the slow but steady elevation gains. I've paused here not just to take in the view, but also to take a closer look at the next little stretch of trail, which looks disturbingly off-camber for my taste. Just slowing things down and looking it over, it occurs to me I can level myself out a bit by straddling that drainage channel. I've been avoiding airing down since I have to keep getting back on the highway, but I'm going to soften up my tires a bit for a little more grip. Ultimately, my line could have been even further to the right to avoid that tippy feeling, but the truck climbs up with no drama. The switchbacks are so tight that I have to maneuver in reverse to make these turns. I'm working my way back down that flat-topped butte and trying to keep my eyes on this narrow trail and not let myself be distracted by the stunning panoramas revealed by every new turn. My friends are camped at the base of that mountain, but I've still got some daylight left and I'm curious to see how far up the mountain I can get. The lingering snow in late April is not promising. Long before I even hit the dirt road to the top of the mountain, the leftover spring slush increases steadily as I gain elevation. Unsurprisingly, my turnoff doesn't look good. This amount of fresh, cold winter snow wouldn't be too problematic, but you've heard me say it before, warm, wet, rotten snow is like driving in marbles, and it quickly brings the truck to a halt. It's just going to get worse the further up I go, so there's no point in insisting. Instead, I've dropped back down to a lower elevation 
I found a random, unplanned trail to explore. I can see on the map that it's just a dead-end spur, but if it doesn't climb too much, maybe it'll take me somewhere interesting. having pretty good success pushing through some of these patches, but eventually it becomes clear I'm not going to get any further. Not worth it. Definitely not worth risking getting stuck here, only to get a little further up. I'm eventually going to get stopped anyway, so... Even though I didn't get very far up the mountain, I've really enjoyed my day of visiting a number of features I normally just drive right past, and I'm ready to find camp and settle in for the evening. Jason and Megan are set up down here, but I'm going to move on to where everyone else is camped. Even though I'm still a long ways from starting any kind of build out of the Topo Toppers Mesa Camper, I love the quick easy setup and interior standing space. It just makes me want to get out even more. Everyone's still asleep up in the main camp, but I see that Jason and Megan are up, so I'm going to stroll down and warm up at their fire.
This evening, we'll all be dining at the Cowboy Dinner Tree, an unusual and very rustic restaurant out in the middle of the Oregon desert. We'll spend today catching up with friends, taking a hike up the rim rock above our camp, along with a nice little nap. So while it's not yet time to air up and head home, I'm gonna put down the camera and enjoy some quality time with some quality people. If you enjoy the time you spend watching my videos, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. Members have access to exclusive extra content, direct messaging priority, and other benefits. Without support from viewers like you, producing these videos would not be possible. Thank you for watching.